Hey guys, what's up? Bienvenidos a la Ciudad de México. I'm here with my brother Brandon. He's right over here. So guys, this week we are going to be exploring Mexico and uh, we are actually going to be here on November 2nd, which is Dia de los Muertes. But today, we're going to be checking out the Frida Kahlo Museum. This is pan de muerto. It's a sweet bread that they make only during the Dia de los Muertos celebrations. It starts sometime around October and goes until the 2nd of November, which is the last day of Dia de los Muertos. I'm excited to try. Let's see how it is. Is it really good? Yeah, it's really freaking good. <laughs> it's really sweet, but it's really good. First bite, pan de muertos. That is really good. That kind of reminds me a little bit of like, almost like funnel cake, but not fried. Yeah, exactly. It's a lighter, like... Because you can see all the sugar here. So we just left the Frida Kahlo Museum. It not only is a beautiful, beautiful house, it was a house that she grew up in. She was born in 1907, and at the age of 18, she was in a very serious accident. She got hit by a car, would never be the same, would always have braces for the rest of her life, but pursued her career in art. And from the day she was born, she was a rebel. She'd wear what she wanted, she was the type of person she wanted to be and you see that really reflected in her art. I was blown away by the museum in general and I think one of the things that I didn't realize as much was she was this famous painter of course but like how much suffering she had in her life. Yeah. She had polio early on in her life. She had this terrible accident. I think the guide said that she had over 30 surgeries in her life to try to correct these things. Through the surgery she got addicted to morphine. A lot of suffering in her life and she, you know, expressed herself and the suffering through her work. I think well, another thing that struck me was just how loyal that she was to Mexico. She wanted to prove that Mexico was this gem in terms of the art scene and had so much to offer. You know, at the time, what was really revered was European art, even in the United States as well. And so really to try to bring pride and to be famous in her own country meant a lot to her. And I think that's something that was really admirable. So she married a photographer and a painter named Diego Rivera. He was actually 22 years older than her when they married. He was 42 and she was 22, but she knew from the moment she saw him when she was still in school that she wanted to marry him. For a long time, she lived in his shadow. She was known as Diego's wife, and it was only when she eventually came to America and, and had a gallery there that she started to gain more and more traction, would later do galleries in Paris as well. But she was always upset that she wasn't famous in her home country of Mexico because she had so much pride in her country and in her background. And it was only just before she died, about a year before she died, that she got to finally do a gallery here in Mexico. She'd later become much more famous when Madonna do a tour that featured her fashion and her art style. The other thing that was um, really interesting too was to hear about her personality. Our guide said that they used to throw parties all the time, Diego Rivera and Ricardo, that people would come because Diego invited them, but they would stay because of Frida's personality. She definitely was very fiery as well. There's a lot of photos and paintings that she made. And if she got a bad review or something, there was one where she created this cut in the actual painting, but it's left like that because that's part of the experience as well. Yeah, it was actually one of her mentors and he had said, it's not even worth a penny. And you can actually still see in the canvas this scratch from that. Diego had affairs with other women in his life. Even Frida's sister at one time had an affair with Diego. And so there's a, a, a painting of their family where she painted out her sister's face. Scratched her face <laughs> out, yeah. <laughs> You're so dead she, to she me. Was not shy with how she was feeling. But I think that authenticity, that realness, that willingness to express her suffering through her art is part of why she became this famous artist. She's also like such a rebel for her time and progressive in ways mm -hmm. that I really surprised me. This is, you know, early 1900s and she was bisexual. And um, polyamorous. Really, yeah, polyamorous. In general, just very strongly opinionated and to be a woman at that time and have all those characteristics was very rare. And that's actually, that was an interesting uh, conversation we had with our guide because I was saying, well, you know, that must have been very risky and dangerous for that period of time. And 
our tour guide was saying, well, you know, if you were a man and you were gay, it was definitely risky, but if you were a woman, it was just more accepted. It was kind of like you didn't have, there was different standards for men and women at that period of time. Yeah, it definitely talks about that, what a small box men were put into and still are put into, right? It's all about yeah. machismo, it's all about uh, strength and, you know. Speaking of which, we're actually uh, in a couple of hours heading over to see some luchadores. Should be fun. Yeah, so stay tuned. <laughs> One last thing I wanted to mention, obviously this is a very busy tourist attraction. It's one of the busiest in Mexico City. You can either get a general admission ticket for 230 pesos, or you can get the guided tour for about a thousand pesos per person or about $50 for each guest attending. But both me and Brandon did the guided tour and we really enjoyed it, thought it was very informative, but obviously a bit more expensive. So I'll let you guys decide which ticket is best for you. Well guys, that's it for this video. At this point, you guys probably know the routine. Make sure to leave a like down below. And if there's someone you're gonna explore Mexico City with, make sure to share this video with them. Plus, uh, click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my new content, and click the bell icon to be notified every time I put out a new video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Robbie Frank, and as always, I'll catch you next time.